Hello friends! So lately I've been seeing a lot of people do favorites videos. I thought I'd try it out. So some of these are definitely more like essentials than literal favorites. I mean everything has like a little bit of a drawback to it, like nothing's perfect. The one that I have like might not be it, like the one, but the concept of having the thing is very helpful. So. I have some that are businessy and some that are personal. None of them are actually like candle specific. The tools that I use for making candles are pretty standard. Like I don't really have anything that's like you just wouldn't already have it. I guess let's hop into it. Say hi, people. Hi. Yeah. Everybody loves you. Everybody loves you. stairs so I'm kind of <laughs> out of breath. Also I've been seeing a lot more vloggers that I follow like do stuff standing up so I'm trying a standing up. Okay so the first thing that is like absolutely an essential for me is my DSLR. Canon 6D Mark II and it's my baby. Her name is Mildred. <laughs> Originally I used this to film my earlier videos but as you can see she's kind of big. <laughs> like for just switching it around then it was kind of hard. Maybe one day I'll kind of go back to using this more often for videos. For now it's mostly actual candle business stuff so like I do most of my videos on here that like I do for Instagram and then definitely all the product photography on here. For the longest time I only had my I scared myself for a second. <laughs> Why can I not get this sentence out of my mouth? For the longest time, I only had my 50 millimeter fixed lens that I used for like everything. If you know stuff about cameras and lenses, you'll know that although this gets a really nice depth of field and a very pretty picture, it <laughs> doesn't give you a lot of like space to move around. When I started filming things and taking pictures at the dance studio I go to, there were just a lot of times where I was literally like backed all the way up into a corner to try to get everything I needed into the frame. It's better for like close-up stuff, which is great for product photography. When I started doing things with people, it wasn't the best. I got my zoom lens, 24 millimeters to 70 millimeters, which kind of covers a lot of stuff that I need. Stylistically, I get to do new things with this one. I feel like in general, my natural style isn't really like so wide angle. I've always been like more close up. I don't know, it's been interesting to play around with that and like kind of try a different style out. I don't, I just feel like there's so many things that I do I cannot do without this. The way that I do things, like this is absolutely essential to me. So then the next thing, which I can't really show you because I'm using it, is the camera that I've gotten for vlogging, which is, I believe, a Sony Z1 or something. I know that's gonna be wrong, so I will, <laughs> I don't know, put the right thing up here or something. As I was saying with the other camera, that one just wasn't as moving around <laughs> friendly. All oh, right, the other downside is that So yeah, since that one's a little bulkier, it just like wasn't as easy to film with like consistently, I guess. Because of that, I started filming on my phone, which as you know, I've complained about a lot in the past. That method didn't work either. I feel like the quality of the phone video wasn't what I wanted it to be. And also the storage situation got really messed up. I have been enjoying this camera. I feel like it has made filming vlogs much easier. I do like the quality of the camera. It has a lot of manual functions, which is nice. When I'm doing photography and videography, I really utilize all of the manual functions. This camera, I can change the shutter speed, f-stop, and the ISO, and like some other stuff, so that's nice for me. It's hard for me to like give those things up. The downsides for me is that even though I can change the f-stop, I feel like I don't get as much of like the cinematic look, but I know that vlogs don't necessarily need to be that. The biggest downside for me is the battery that they put in this camera. I don't know. Like, so you need a good battery and I don't understand why this battery dies in like 30 or 40 minutes. So I did separately buy like a three pack of batteries and a charger that can charge all of them at the same time. Those are the downsides to the camera, but I think having a smaller camera that has main video functions is very essential to 
at least what I do. I will say, though obviously expensive and really not necessary, having an iPad has been a very good thing <laughs> for me. I've always wanted something in between having a computer and like a notebook, and this unfortunately is it. So this is another thing that I can't show you right now because I'm using it. Just a really standard phone tripod because most phone tripods just have a telescoping kind of feature and then the legs don't do much whereas like the bigger tripods you have to like lengthen all of the legs which just takes a little bit of time it doesn't have to be expensive at all just a good phone tripod helps the one that i have the actual clip that holds your phone is detachable when i take that off it just has like the little the little <laughs> screw thing pretty much all cameras will have a little thingy at the bottom that you can screw into a tripod. Because of that, I can take the phone attachment off and screw in my vlogging camera. So I'm still using the phone tripod for this, which is nice. So one thing that I have really been enjoying for organizational and like business stuff is using X tiles. I know a lot of people use Notion. They're more or less the same thing. Maybe Notion has changed a lot since when I tried to use it, but like, I don't know. I remember there being paywalls, but I see a lot of people using it. But regardless, I started using X tiles anyway and I like it. So I'm sticking with that for now. If you aren't familiar familiar with Notion or X-Tiles, it is just kind of like a hub for whatever you want it to be. For me, I have it... How do I have it? One of the main things I use it for is to keep track of all of my to-do lists, which it's nice that you can have them like all in one space. I also created a dashboard where I can keep track of new products, but also kind of like restocks. And I have it broken down by each month so I can keep track of what I'm planning on releasing or restocking that month. Have that broken down into like further steps that I can keep track of so that it doesn't all have to be up here. <laughs> I also have another dashboard where I keep track of social media things. I can kind of put content ideas that I have in there. I have it split up between YouTube and Instagram. Yeah, it's just nice that like if I have an idea, I can just jot it down in there real quick in a place I know I can find it later. Because lastly, I have an inventory dashboard, which I have cataloged all of like my fragrance oils, my paper supplies, my packing supplies, just like any supplies that I possibly need and can kind of keep track of like if I need to order something soon, you know, generally if I'm running low on it, how recently I ordered it. Before I didn't have any system like that and it would just be like, noticed I'm running low on this fragrance oil, I'll write it down somewhere and then lose where I wrote it. <laughs> if you just like things being like in categories, I'm sure using Notion is pretty much the same thing so you could do either, but I currently am using X tiles and I recommend it. So another thing in the land of software is I use Canva. I used to use Adobe Illustrator. I'm pretty sure the subscription for both was like $10 a month. So for me, it was just switching to Canva rather than like making a new investment into a subscription. But the kinds of things I needed to do, I did not need something as elaborate as Adobe Illustrator. And I also didn't really train myself how to use it properly. So I was mostly frustrated using it. Canva is way more user-friendly. If you can afford it, I highly recommend getting the pro version. There is just the free version, but you have a lot more resources in the pro version. I do think that it's a really good resource to have as a small business. I use it for her practically everything. I use it almost every day to make my labels, make things for my website, if I need to make like any graphic stuff for social media. I don't know. I just use it for everything, honestly. I'm pretty sure this is in like everybody's like small business favorites. My Rolo printer. I put it off for a really long time. I was definitely that person that was like, I can just print all of my shipping labels on my normal printer and tape them onto boxes and it'll be fine. That ended up being a big waste of paper if I only needed to print one shipping label and it didn't take up the entire sheet of paper. Using way more tape than I needed, spending way more time than I needed, and was just like, okay, I think I just need 
a thermal printer. <laughs> they are an investment, I know, but once you feel more confident in your business that you want to keep doing it and keep growing it, like it is a really useful thing to have. I will say the only thing that I regret was not getting a wireless one. I just really wish I had a wireless one, but I, I can't justify like this one's fine. Till it's broken, broken, I can't justify it spending more money to get another one. So I think it's a very good business investment. In, so yes, I stand by this decision. <laughs> Okay, so another thing that has been super helpful for me with small business stuff is Ikea. So much of their furniture, at least for candle making, was just like really ideal. I'm sure most of it is really ideal for any industry that you're doing. I pretty much feel like every time I had a vision for a setup that I was just like, I think this will be the most efficient, this will be the most ideal kind of setup I could have for what I need. Ikea just had exactly what I needed. Yeah, this whole setup is Ikea, um, which is pretty much exactly what I wanted. A place that had storage and then just like a top where I could actually do all the candle making a bigger shelf for storage where I could keep fragrance oils. Of course, I have way too many, so I had to get some shelves, which are also Ikea. The table that I use for pouring all of my candles and just like doing other general business things is from Ikea. It's, I think, like one of the coolest pieces of furniture that I have. The sides fold up and down. <laughs> More or less for now, I kind of always have it fully extended because that's how I need it most of the time, but it is nice that in the past, I've been able to break that down to like being a much smaller piece of furniture and we can have people stay in here if they if we have guests that like need a space to be. And then as you saw in the recent video, my entire closet packing candle storage situation um, that I just upgraded is also all Ikea, which was nice to just have a lot of versatile and like customizable storage and like working space. But most of my office is from Ikea and I don't regret that one bit. I think I didn't film anything that I just said. <laughs> is the camera turned off? And it doesn't normally do that while I'm filming. So I think I need to repeat everything I just said, which is fine because it'll probably be more cohesive and efficient saying it the second time. The last thing that is businessy that I feel like isn't essential for me is my editing software. For many, many years, I have been a Final Cut girl. My editing journey over the years has been very long. I think I started kind of messing around with it maybe when I was like, somewhere between 10 and 12. For that, I used to just take a bunch of pictures of our cats, like when we got our first digital camera as like a family. I'm getting like really blown out right now because the sun is out. Suddenly this ISO doesn't work, but now the sun's going away, so. I would take the pictures of the cats, put it in editing software, add music to it, and like have like a slideshow of pictures of the cats. In college, I actually had a internship with Dick Clark Studios as an editor and I'd edit commercials for them and like promo videos and they used Final Cut. So then I kind of just like became a Final Cut person. And then recently, I've really wanted to get more into color grading, which I've been playing around with. To my knowledge, that just wasn't as easy to do on Final Cut, but it is a very obvious feature, I guess, of of DaVinci Resolve, which is free versus Final Cut that I think is like 200 something dollars. Um, I did get DaVinci to start playing around with um, color grading, which has been really fun. And now I've just been kind of using DaVinci. But yeah, so now I'm somewhere in between being a Final Cut and a DaVinci person. I will say, I know a lot of people are like, you can just do cap cut on your phone and stuff. I cannot edit on my phone to save my life. So I am kind of old school and like need my desktop. If you don't want to pay for Final Cut, you don't have to, and you can use DaVinci, and I, I really like it, so I, I recommend it. So that's like the last purely businessy essential favorite thing that I have, and then I have a couple that are just more like personal. Okay, we're starting off real strong with this one, with something I'm sure you've never heard of. A water bottle. <laughs> um, 
Part of me feels a little stupid for even having this on here. However, I will say that I have always kind of struggled with consistently drinking water. The second I got a water bottle, I think this one was like $10 from Target or something that I've been using now for maybe like two years. I just am so much better at staying hydrated once I got one of these. I think a lot of people now have a reusable water bottle. So again, not a revolutionary idea. If you haven't made the switch from just a glass of water, to a water bottle, I highly recommend it. The next thing, which has become like an absolute essential in my life is a heated blanket. I am always cold. I don't know why. It could easily be that I have very bad circulation. I don't know. It took me such a long time to get a heated blanket for some reason. Now it's changed my entire life. I think I got my first one because I have more than one. Like two years ago or something, and partially it was that our heating bill was really high in the winter, and I was just like, we can't just be running the heater all the time. And then in came the heated blanket. It's the best thing, I cannot recommend it enough. I just think if you find yourself being cold, heated blankets are absolutely essential. <laughs> okay, so another thing that I absolutely cannot live without now is my Kindle. My Kindle actually doesn't have a name. I don't remember when I started reading again. I was definitely one of those people that school just ruined reading for me. School ruined a lot of things for me, but it definitely ruined reading for a while. I don't remember when it started. Five or six years ago at this point or something? I just like had this really strong urge to reread Harry Potter. So I did. Ever since then, I'm pretty sure I've read almost every single night, which has just like made the biggest difference to my sleep and my anxiety at night because my anxiety is at its like highest at night. Reading just changed the game for me. And yes, now I read every single night for like, you know, at least the past five years. That being said, I I know that there is a lot of questionable connotations with self-help books. I have a complicated relationship with them, but I've kind of picked them up again, have been a lot more selective about what I read. In the past like two months, I have read two books that I think have like actually changed my brain chemistry a little bit. The first one is Big Magic. The title suggests, or just straight up says, it's about just trying to live freely in terms of your creativity, which is something that I have been struggling with for a really long time. For many reasons, definitely the pressures of social media, everything surrounding that I think stifles people's creativity a lot. And I've really been trying to rewire my brain into just blocking all of that out as much as I can. Creativity is the thing that like I know makes me the happiest. A lot of things in this book were very eye-opening for me, I guess. So many of the concepts are things that you've heard before, but it's just, for me, it needs to be said a certain way for it to like actually click. And I think a lot of the ways that things were phrased in this book really just worked for me. I highlighted so much of the book. And yeah, I don't know. I think it was like a very good first step into me trying to really heal my relationship with creativity and like myself a little bit. But I highly recommend it if you're a creative person. Even if you're not really struggling with that, I feel like you'd enjoy it. Another thing that I read in the past couple of months that like literally blew my mind <laughs> was The Courage to be Disliked, which really does go into a lot of things. It has a strong emphasis on psychology and philosophy, which might not be interesting to a lot of people. I think it spoke to me partially because I am a huge, huge people pleaser and I know a lot of people are. So much of my anxiety and like sometimes depression is just centered around me being afraid of how I'm perceived by other people and what other people think of me. Not truly letting myself be myself in a lot of situations. I think most people do that to some extent, but like you don't really realize how much suffering it's causing you. There's just a lot of concepts in that book that kind of like big magic of like, I've heard those ideas before, but like it needed to be said to me in a certain way for it to like me to really process it. There were definitely some things in there I didn't want to hear and I didn't want to believe and that I'm still trying to process after like it's been like a month since I read it but yes I do think that those two reads have 
they mean a lot to me and I think they've definitely changed part of me and the way that I think, which has been fun, I think. Something about them has like really stuck with me since I've read them, so uh, I highly recommend them. <laughs> Like I said, I've been trying to just rewire my brain a little bit. Those books have really helped and just create and not think about it so much. And I know part of it is that I overthink everything I do. I'm always worried that what I'm doing isn't original enough, it's not unique enough, and like maybe that does not everything I do has to be. <laughs> I've kind of always been like anti-trend for that reason of why would I do it when it's already been done so many times. I've seen so many favorites and like essential videos. I don't know, why not just participate? taken it because I can. If I have an idea, maybe not talk myself out of every single idea I have convincing myself it's stupid, it's not necessary, and just do it and see what happens. So that's a little bit what I'm gonna try to do in coming months is just if I have an idea, maybe I should actually just do it. Not worry about if it's perfect, not worry about if it gets received really well by people or gets a lot of views if it's unique enough, like I just need to not think about all of that so much. And I'm really gonna try not to. I know nothing I said in this video was revolutionary. Maybe it wasn't even interesting, but I'm still just filming it anyway. I don't know how to end videos ever and I don't think I ever will. But yeah, those are just some things that like are very essential to everything that I do as a human and a small business owner. Again, I always feel a little weird about these videos because it is just kind of like, these are things you need to buy. I don't think you need to buy any of this. It's just me sharing what I use in case you're interested, in case you're researching things you might want. Those are my essentials. And um, as always, thank you for watching. And I look forward to just making whatever I want to make in the coming months and hoping that you find it interesting.